Hi, it's Fishing Sister. Are you planning a holiday to Kangaroo Island and thinking you'd like to fish while you're there? Well, we've made a series of fishing videos from our Kangaroo Island holiday to help you plan your trip. Our videos will show you where we went, what fish we caught and how we caught them. Throughout the videos, we'll give you our tips and tricks as well, so it's worth checking them out. So watch our videos and plan where to visit. You can head over to Kangaroo Island confident that you'll get the most out of your trip. There's nothing worse than wasting your time traveling hours to a place and you find you can't even fish there. Especially when your time is short and you've only got a few days over there. You might not be able to manage the walk down to the cliffs because it's too steep. And it's good to know this before you head over there. So let's start helping you plan your very own fishing trip to Kangaroo Island. Unlike our other videos, this is a very long video and you might want to watch it in stages. Or some of you might want to sit down with a cuppa and watch the whole thing in one go. So let's explain how this works. First, if you lose where you're at in the video or want to revisit a location, this video has timestamps or chapter links shown in the video description below. Simply click on the link and visit the section you want on the video. Also, to watch all of our fishing videos for each separate location, you can follow the top right link at the end of every video and that will take you to the next video in the queue. Or you can go to the Fishing Kangaroo Island YouTube playlist. Also, for more information, visit fishingsister.com.au, which also has a full playlist. So there are several ways to watch this series. Okay, so off we go. So this is Kangaroo Island. We're going to talk about the places we fished as though we traveled around the island in a big circle, starting at Penishaw and finishing at Borden Beach. As we go around, we'll show you our fishing videos from 18 locations. So first, let's talk about how to get over to Kangaroo Island. The ferry is the main way to get over to the island and we've made a short video on catching the ferry so you know what to expect. You'll see that it's not that hard to do. It doesn't take long and I had heaps of fun out on the deck. Tip one, take your seasickness tablets before you go on the ferry. Occasionally it can be a bit rough but taking your tablets means you won't even notice. I get very motion sick. I can't even read text messages in the car, but I was fine. So make sure you watch our Catching the Ferry to Kangaroo Island video. There are also small planes if you prefer, and you can hire a car on the island. Okay, so the first fishing location to show you is Penishaw Jetty. As soon as you get off the ferry at Penishaw, you can head to the jetty and cast the line in. It's a lovely spot to fish, gazing across at Hog Bay with its pure white sand. Like most jetties, you can catch a range of fish. The day that we visited, we mainly caught grass whiting that frequent the reed beds around the jetty. We were really pleased to catch a squid and a nice sized salmon trout, so we had something for dinner. I was surprised that the fish didn't seem to mind the commotion of the ferries. This would be a great spot to bring the kids as they'll probably catch something, even if it's only a grass whiting. And of course, there's always a cafe right at the end of the jetty in the ferry terminal building. And there's toilets there as well. Chapman River. We were going to fish on Antichamber Bay, but the weather was awful. Instead, we drove inland for around five minutes and we fished straight off the river bank. It was perfect that day because it was sheltered from the wind. Over a couple of hours, we caught quite a few brim without much effort. Largest was 38 centimeters, which we took home and we cooked for dinner. Chapman River would be a great place to take the kids fishing as they don't have far to walk and they can fish straight off the riverbank and they're very likely to catch something. You won't need to spend countless hours waiting for a bite while the kids get bored. There are areas to camp along the river and excellent picnic facilities with a large undercover barbecue area with tables and chairs and there's toilets. Tip two, we suggest you stay in a central place on the island if you're going to spend a while there. 
You won't have to pack and unpack your gear, which always makes traveling more enjoyable. Yes, you'll need to travel back and forth each day, but that's no problem because the island is small enough that you can do that. So if you stay on one side of the island, be prepared for long drives. Pennington Bay Beach is next. The Pennington Bay car park is located high above the beach. From there, you can survey the beach, check out the troughs and decide where to fish. People say they've been able to watch schools of salmon in the bay, and I'm not surprised because the water is so clear. From the car park, we could watch the big swells rolling in with one continuous wave after another stretching across the whole bay. The water was completely calm except for these big graceful waves. The day that we were there was hot and there were lots of people in the water. So we walked around to the next small bay. We left the bucket in the car and took a keeper bag. We caught quite a few salmon, but we only kept two. And we buried them in the damp sand to keep them fresh. The ramp to the beach makes it easy to walk down. If there were fewer people on the beach, we would have fished right in front of the ramp. So this is a good place to come if you can't handle too much walking. There's also a picnic area and good toilet facilities. So all in all, a brilliant place to visit. Note that there's nowhere to buy food or drink, so come prepared. Flower Cask Bay. Flower Cask Bay is completely the opposite. While Pennington Bay is easily accessible, Flower Cask Bay is only for the fit and adventurous. It was a bit off the beaten track, and for a while there, I thought we were lost. Eventually, we reached the car park, and then there was about a 10 minute walk to the beach. When we got there, we saw the sand dunes down to the beach, and we thought, no way, not today. It would have been hard yakka, so we didn't even attempt it. But if we'd had more energy, we would have given it a shot, because it really looked like the kind of beach you'd catch a salmon. It was rugged and beautiful, and it was windswept, a big ocean beach. But you need to be fit, and traveling light for this one. Otherwise, forget it. Tip three, stay fueled up. You can get fuel in Penishaw and Kingscote, but if you're traveling west, don't let your fuel get too low. Fill up at Vivon Bay or Pandana, as there is no petrol stations past there. Note, they're not open late either, so don't get caught short. Next is Wreckers Beach. Wreckers Beach was disappointing because when we got there, it was full of seaweed but we could see its potential for flathead. So we had a fish for an hour or so, but we caught nothing. So we packed up and headed off. And as we were driving along, we noticed that there were some spots where you could pull your car off the road and access the beach. So we tried one of those. Straight away, we knew this place was special. It was secluded and easy to clamber down to the beach. What a magnificent place. There were stingrays sunbaking in the shallow water and we fished there for a couple of hours and we caught a couple of flathead and a big one, possibly the highlight of the trip for me. I still find it amazing when I actually catch the kind of fish that I was trying to get. We also caught a couple of mullet. Martin caught a stingray, which we managed to release without harming. Vivon Bay. Vivon Bay is an iconic beach that really takes your breath away. The charred landscape from the bushfires that surround the beach just add to its rugged beauty. The colours of this beach are spectacular with the pure white sand and the very clear waters that are so common on Kangaroo Island. There are no facilities at the beach, but there is the Vivon Bay General Store that's about five minutes away. So stock up there before you head to the beach. We caught flathead and salmon trout. We did lose a few reeks because of the submerged rocks, but we had a lot of fun. Tip four, carry some cash. One afternoon, we found a place to buy fuel and filled up only to discover that their internet was down. So we couldn't pay for it on our card. Lucky for us, we had some cash with us because we wouldn't normally. So this doesn't happen very often, but be prepared for the unexpected. Harriet River. Harriet River is another place to try catching brim and other river fish. We pulled into a car park next to the bridge right across from the Vivon Bay General Store and we walked to the riverbank. We cast our lines in 
that in no time I'd caught a nice size ring. Not a keeper though, it would have been a very sheltered spot on a windy day as well. Vivon Bay Jetty. Vivon Bay Jetty is a very small jetty with a spectacular outlook. From there you can look at the broad sweep of Vivon Bay. The water was so clear on the day that we were there, it was like gazing into an aquarium. And there were lots of cute little fish playing in the corals and the grasses. We enjoyed watching those. We were up before dawn and caught a couple of squid just before the sun came up. But once the sun was up, they disappeared. There are no toilets at the jetty, but it's very easy to access the jetties. You can park right up at the start of the jetty. Southwest River, Hanson Bay. Southwest River, Hanson Bay is very sheltered and a great place to take the kids for swimming and fishing. You can park close to the beach. Note that the ramp down to the beach is a little bit steep, so take care if you can't handle that. People go out on kayaks on this bay because it's so sheltered. But we fished right off the shore and we caught a couple of mullet and a salmon trout. The weather was unsettled that afternoon and some showers came over, but once they cleared, there was a big rainbow. And it was the first time for me fishing under a rainbow. It was a very special moment and it kind of described how I was feeling, blissful. I was very happy to have caught this mullet because I wanted to try for brim on the banks of the Southwest River that runs behind Hanson Bay. I was told that there's a lot of undersized brim on the island, but not much legal size. So I was keen to give it a go. So I went around to the river and I fished for an hour or so, and it was close to dusk. The brim were biting like crazy. Yes. As soon as I cast in, I got bites. All the brim that I caught were undersized. It was so much fun. One came close to being a keeper though. There'd been bushfires through that whole area just a few months before and all the bush was blackened and it looked so dramatic. There are toilets in the car park, but otherwise this is a very isolated, unspoiled location. There was definitely no facilities here or network coverage. Tip five, network coverage on KI is patchy, so don't rely on it to find out if you can keep the fish that you've caught. I made up some fish ID cards and I always carry them so that I, I know what the legal sizes of different fish are. Of course, having no network coverage is also a blessing. No distractions from fishing. For those times you do have network coverage, you can always look at the SA Fishing app, Perza. Put it on your phone before you go. Hanson Bay Beach. When we went back to the Westerns Caravan Park where we were staying, we were talking to the owners Mark and Fiona, and we said, look, we had no luck catching salmon that day. And they were so surprised. And they said, did you walk around to the big beach beyond the bay? And we realized that we've been fishing in the wrong place for the big fish. So the next day we went back and we walked around to Hanson Bay Beach. It's about a 20 minute walk. It's quite easy going, except for the steep slope when you're coming down from the sand dunes onto the beach. The beach did not disappoint. We were there at dusk and the fish were biting immediately. After an hour, we'd caught about 10 decent sized salmon with the largest being 48 centimeters. It was such an adrenaline rush because the salmon, they were fighting hard when we brought them in and I'd never experienced anything like that before. The beach was treacherous because it had a deep trough right on the shoreline and the sand slanted straight down into it. And we were casting straight into the trough almost at our feet. And we had to be really careful not to lose our balance and fall in the trough. I was glad that I was wearing my fishing shoes because they had spikes for grip. Darkness fell really quickly and then we were fishing under the stars because the moon hadn't risen yet and it was, it was such a magical experience. West Bay. It didn't look to us like there was much fishing around the western side of the island because there's all cliffs down to the water. West Bay, however, looked like a great place. So we made the drive across to West Bay on the far side of the island. The road had literally just been opened up after the fires and I think we were the first to drive on it. And it was a lovely drive through the bush to get to West Bay. And the road was in really good condition. 
took a long time to get there it felt like I would say about 30 minutes from Flinders Chase National Park entrance West Bay is a stunning white sandy beach and on the day that we were there we were the only ones there and there were these perfect big waves just rolling in it was so remote there's quite a steep path down to the beach probably about a 15 minute walk but there are toilets there and some unpowered campsites as well tip six you need a permit to enter the flinders chase national park and we bought ours online before we went western river cove western river cove had it all a beautiful sandy cove and a pretty river it was a rough drive on the dirt road with lots of corrugations and potholes to get to this beach the car was shaking around a bit but wow it was so worth the drive coming into western river was spectacular the river winds around to the beach and there's all these lush reedy areas there's a small camping ground and a picnic area with toilets and the whole place was so clean the bay is small with rocky areas at each end and we fished off the rocks and also off the beach we caught a few mullet and a small sweep in Trevally, which was different it was very peaceful and we really enjoyed all of the gently lapping waves and the seagulls circling which was quite different to the experiences of the big open beaches and on the way back to the car we stopped and had a fish in the river for brim quite close to where the river joins the beach we spent about 10 minutes we had no bites and we were about to pack up and then out of the blue I caught this 40 centimeter brim I seriously couldn't believe my eyes another trip highlight Snelling Beach Snelling Beach was one of the few beaches that we could drive our car onto we drove to the far end of the beach where the middle river meets the beach well it wasn't actually running to the ocean that day but it was so convenient being able to access our gear out of the back of the car while we fished we could see the flash of small fish in the waves as soon as we pulled up we fished for mullet throwing handfuls of burley into the water right in front of us and then casting into it and we had mullet practically jumping onto our hooks i've never seen so many fish swimming in front of me and in the waves it's a treasured memory for me now middle river so after fishing on Snelling Beach we drove inland for about 10 minutes and we pulled off the road and fished straight into Middle River for brim and we caught three one of which was 30 centimeters we couldn't believe how easy it was to catch this brim we were using the fresh mullet that we just caught on Snelling Beach so we released that though because we had plenty of mullet for dinner but yeah it's definitely worth a try Middle River for something like brim King George Beach dropped into King George Beach to see what it was like and what we found was a small sheltered pebble beach we met some guys who'd been snorkeling there and they told us that they catch crayfish in this area and that there were plenty of excellent fish out there in the deeper water that they'd seen we didn't catch any of those because we couldn't access that deeper water a kayak would have come in really handy so all we caught was was one small tommy ruff we later found out that king george beach is actually a larger sandy beach further along from the pebble beach where we were so we came back to try it out we found that there's no public road to the sandy beach so we had to park at the pebble beach and walk up along the cliffs to get there it took about 40 minutes the beach was secluded with beautiful clear water we caught some mullet it was well worth the effort Tip seven, take the right footwear with you to Kangaroo Island, whether it's slippery pebbles, sharp shells, rocks, fishing shoes are essential as there are so many places that you need protection for your feet, but you don't want to wear boots and get, them, get your boots wet. So see our video on fishing shoes, the ones that we took over there and refer to our recommended products on our website. Stokes Bay Stokes Bay is one of Kangaroo Island's iconic beaches walking through the caves to the beach was a unique experience we had no idea what we were in for 
It was an easy walk through the caves with our fishing gear, but it was quite tight in places and I managed to get myself stuck at one point. But when we came out of the caves and the beach opened up before us, we were amazed at its beauty. There were some sheltered clear rock pools first and then there was a long sandy beach and the colours were sensational. We fished for a while and we caught mullet, enough keepers so that we had dinner sorted that night. But Stokes Bay felt like something from an exotic movie set. All too good to be real, but it is real. There's also a cafe and a camping ground at Stokes Bay, so you can get your coffee fix or something to eat while you're out there. And there's toilets, a picnic area, so don't miss seeing this place. Emu Bay. Emu Bay is another iconic beach. The day that we visited Emu Bay, there was a lot of seaweed and the weather was not great, but we had a fish anyway. You can drive onto Emu Bay, so we drove about halfway down and we fished straight from our car's tailgate. So relaxing, so Australian. We caught a few mullet. They sure were prolific, that trip. Then something amazing happened. A massive school of salmon swam right into the bay. It's the first time I've seen anything like it. They were like jumping out of the water and the birds were circling and diving in. What a sight. I was so excited. I thought, I'm going to catch a salmon. How can I miss? And I cast my reel in and it seized up and turns out the internal mechanism was all rusty and it just totally jammed. So all I could do was watch. The guy beside us though, he caught a 50 centimetre salmon using this very light rod. His skill in bringing that fish in was something to see. What was really funny is that we found out that he lives five minutes from us here in Adelaide. Shout out Rayland, you're a legend. There is a cafe at Emu Bay that's open in the warmer months and there's toilets there too. So five stars for accessibility, no walking involved and cliffs and that kind of thing with this beach. Boxing Bay. We headed off to Boxing Bay and found that there was no proper road to the beach. We were basically driving through paddocks with big ruts and rocks. We've got a four wheel drive, sort of a pretend one, not a proper one, I guess, but we managed the road okay. I would not attempt the road if there's been a lot of rain though. You might get bogged, I suppose. But when we arrived at the beach, there was no actual parking area. So we had to park above the beach and walk down. We fished for about an hour or so, but we didn't get any bites. So for us, it really wasn't worth the effort. Tip eight. For every location we visited, we didn't need a four wheel drive. Some of the roads were rough, corrugated with potholes, but generally they were really well maintained. And all of the main roads across the island are bitumenized. So you, you probably don't need your four wheel drive. Kingscote Jetty. Rated one of the best jetties in South Australia, Kingscote Jetty is easy to access, being a few minutes from the town centre. The first thing you'll notice is that there's three jetties, small, medium and large. We fished the medium sized jetty first, called Fisherman's Jetty, back in April when the weather was awful and we didn't even get a bite. But when we returned in October, we fished off the main jetty, the largest one. There were repairs being done at the time, so there were sections of it that we couldn't access. However, we could use the best section, which is where there were no railings and it was open to the sea. A whole range of fish can be caught off this jetty. We caught squid, which we were very happy with. We liked this jetty because there was plenty of room to spread out, which is just as well because the jetty gets really busy. The Pean Bay, this area has got a lot of shallow water as well. The weather was bad the day we were there, but we had a fish anyway because we were really wanting to catch a flathead or a whiting. Apart from seeing a big stingray when we first arrived, we didn't get any bites. Wearing fishing shoes is essential in this area as there's lots of razor fish whose shells stick up out of the sand and they'll slice your feet open if you're not careful. But apparently razor fish are really good eating. We didn't know it at the time. Anyway, make sure your feet are protected. Wear your fishing shoes. Red banks. Red Banks Beach was a complete surprise. This beach is not very well signposted and it kind of felt like we were out in the middle of nowhere when we were driving there, but we got there. 
we were doubting that we were in the right place. The car park, for want of a better description, is on the top of the cliffs. And we'd heard from some fellow campers back in the campground that the track down to the beach wasn't easy to find. And some people might not even realize that you can get down to the beach. So we were ready for that and we found the track easily. The view from the cliffs was beautiful. Be ready for a difficult walk down to the beach though. Make sure you've got walking shoes on as it's slippery. It's basically a crevasse that the water has worn into the sandy rock. That's your track. So I felt a bit unsteady on my feet because I was carrying all my fishing gear, but made it down there without incident. Red Banks is like nothing else you'll see on KI. The red cliffs are breathtaking. Again, the water is shallow and the conditions that day were perfect for flathead and whiting, both of which we caught. Although the whiting were very undersized, we caught tommies as well and salmon trout. We were also in the water with blue swimmer crabs and stingrays, which was disconcerting at times. We returned to Red Banks a second time because there were strong southerly winds and that meant there was hardly anywhere that we could fish. So we sheltered against the cliffs at Red Banks and it was perfect. No winds troubled us and we had a great session. Red Banks is remote and isolated and it has no facilities. Accessibility is poor. It's definitely not for people who can't manage that slippery track to the beach. So take care with this one. Tip nine, check the wind direction before you go fishing. There is nothing worse than turning up to the beach and finding you can't even cast out because the wind is blowing your rig straight back in your face. American River. There are a number of areas you can fish at American River and we chose to fish off the small jetty because the wind was on our backs there. It was such a windy evening. It's a very picturesque spot to fish because you look straight across to Strawbridge Point. We had the jetty to ourselves. I accidentally caught a blue swimmer crab on a mullet rig of all things. But apparently these crabs are starting to frequent American River, which was unheard of a few years ago. The water was so clear that we could see the squid swimming around quite close to the jetty. Martin managed to catch a couple of squid. Tip 10, you can stock up with supplies from Penishaw, Kingscote, Pandana, or Vivon Bay. American River also has a store within the post office. Strawbridge Point. Strawbridge Point was a tranquil location to fish. It had such a peaceful vibe. We were fishing while looking across at the banks of the American River and there were boats moored around the place and the water was gently lapping the shore and there were seagulls and pelicans keeping us company. Everything about it was just super relaxing. We caught a few whiting, only one keeper, a decent sized salmon trout and a big sand crab. Strawbridge Point was also easily accessible. You don't need to be fit for this one. We parked right near the beach and it was only a short stroll to our fishing spot. We fish standing in the shallow water and also from the shore. It's a good idea to wear your fishing shoes because the shells are quite sharp on your feet and when you're standing fishing in water, you don't know what else is in there with you. Tip 11. If you can plan your fishing trip on KI for spring, summer or early autumn, then that is when the weather is best. Winters are mild but can be windy and spring can be very windy which can take the fun out of fishing. We filmed this video series in the last week of March and the first week of April, so that's autumn, and most of the time the weather was ideal. Browns Beach. When we fished at Browns Beach, the wind was strong, but we had a fish anyway, because it looked like the perfect place to catch flathead, because the water was really shallow and there were submerged rocks everywhere. Unfortunately, we had no bites at all over the couple of hours that we fished. It was an easily accessible place though, with well-maintained toilets and a camping ground. There was barbecues and showers. Tip 12, avoid driving at night or at dusk. 
or if you have to drive, be very careful as there's lots of wildlife crossing the roads. Borden Beach. We stopped into Borden Beach just to see what it was like. It was another bad fishing day with strong winds, so we didn't cast a line in, but it looked like a good spot to visit in better weather. There were stairs from the car park down to the beach, so it was easily accessible. Tip 13, allow enough time for your trip. Kangaroo Island is 150 kilometers long, which is 93 miles from east to west, and it's 57 kilometers at its widest point, which is 35 miles. There are a lot of fishing locations and lots of places to visit, like wineries. So allow yourself enough time. You can see from our videos that Kangaroo Island has diverse fishing locations from small sheltered coves, wild ocean beaches, surf beaches with perfect waves breaking in an endless line into white sand, pebble beaches and shallow beaches with rock pools and weed beds. And then there's all the rivers teeming with fish. We were completely surprised by the different fishing experiences we had. But one thing they all had in common was their pristine, unspoiled beauty. By the way, we caught just over 130 fish during our 14 day fishing odyssey. We are not expert fishers by any means. I literally discovered fishing only 18 months ago. We just followed the basics. We looked at the weather, we looked at the tides, then we decided what fish we would target and we used the right rigs and bait for those fish. And we had fish for dinner every night. The videos will give you a totally realistic idea of what to expect over there. We went to each place only once, except for Red Banks, and each day we filmed what we caught. There were no second chances. There are so many other places to fish on KI that we didn't get to and we'll definitely go back and try out some of the others. There were so many firsts for me on this holiday. I will never forget this trip. We will be going back to KI though, lots of times. We hope you enjoyed this video series and found it useful. We'd love to hear your feedback and hear your stories on fishing on Kangaroo Island. See you on our next fishing adventure. This is Fishing Sister saying goodbye.